In this Logic Pro X tutorial, we're going to be going over vocal comping for beginners. If you don't know how to record audio yet or record vocals, I recommend checking out another video I have on that, as well as a full extensive Logic Pro X tutorial for beginners. I'll leave a couple links, helpful links to those videos in the description, so please do check those out before watching this video because we're going to be starting with pre-recorded vocal takes already in order to comp the perfect vocal. Vocal comping is essentially you're looking at many takes of vocals and taking little pieces from each take to make up the perfect vocal track. Inside my Logic Pro X session here, I have a demo that I've been working on last week and I have some vocal takes already done. So we're gonna go through how you can comp that inside Logic Pro X. So here we are in my Logic Pro X session and this is my demo. We have a Yamaha Grand Piano track and have three vocal takes, vocal one, vocal two, and vocal three. This vocal one is the verse, vocal two is the pre-chorus, and vocal three is the chorus vocal. So a small demo of different vocal takes. There are two options that we can do to comp vocals inside Logic. Well, one is a option that is quite easy in Logic, which we'll be doing, and then the second option is the standard way to do vocal comping. So the standard way in most DAWs to do vocal comping is take multiple tracks of different takes. So let's say we have a vocal take where this is vocal one, we would say vocal take one. And then we would have a different track. We can do the shortcut Command D, and then we would run a new vocal and a vocal take two. We can continue on, and with this, I'm the engineer and I have my singer here. We can go and make multiple different tracks and have different takes of vocals on those tracks. That's the standard way to do vocal comping. Then you would listen through each track and pick out the best pieces you like and then crossfade them all onto one track later. However, inside Logic Pro X, they do make it quite easy. And as you can see here, when I go to this drop down under vocal take one, I'm just gonna delete these tracks because you don't need them. When you go down to the drop down in vocal take one, you can see that I already have 12 takes of vocals. And that just happens because when you record over the track, you're telling Logic that you want to have multiple takes of this track. And so Logic knows right away that you're going to be doing a comp later. For example, I can arm this track. I'm just gonna rename this to vocal one. I can arm this track and do a quick recording over it. So I have my mic here that's hooked up as an input and I can actually talk into this mic and we are recording take 13 on this mic. So I can pause that, do a drop down, and we have take 13. We can go back and we can solo this track and listen to our take 13. And I can actually talk into this mic and we are recording take. So that's take 13. And eventually when we have all the takes we want, Logic will organize it nicely in this drop down. We can move on to verse two and then we can move on to the chorus. So for simplicity's sake of this video, I assume you already have takes of different vocal tracks that you've done. So we can start now learning how to comp. One thing I would suggest is going to your vocal chain effects. So make sure your track is highlighted and going over to the inspector window here and turning off the reverb, the, if you're doing any pitch correction, compression, um, channel EQ. I like to comp without effects because I find the effects just make it sound better in general. So I like to get it, the raw vocal in place, comp with the raw vocal, and then use the effects after to take it to the next level. And I'm going to start comping this vocal. And so what I like to do is make sure, making sure I have the loop at the top. And so I wanna just loop the first section here, which is Bent out of shape, acting like it's really nothing. So I wanna loop these two bars and I wanna listen to these two bars for every single 12 takes so I can see which one I like best. So we've listened to the first one. We can just click up and click number two. And now Bent listen to this one. Shape, acting like it's really nothing. So that seemed to be the same to me. I'm gonna give it a little extension. So I'm actually gonna highlight bar three bars. Take three, we messed up. Take four, we messed up. And so I'm gonna go take five and listen to this. Bent out of shape, acting like it's really nothing. Dreaming about my escape. So I don't 
Now I'm gonna go up to six, and then I'm gonna continue going up to each 12 takes and, and find out which one I like. So I've gone through each of my 12 takes, minus the 13th one, because that was just me talking, and I decided that I like the first part. I'm just gonna drop this down here because I don't need it. Actually, I'm gonna take off that with the scissor window because I completely don't need that. I want a, the biggest view possible to see all my takes. So I decided that I like the first part of take seven. I like the second part of take nine. I like the third part of take 11. I wanna go back to take seven and go back to take 11. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to just highlight all of, of take seven and just make sure. Yeah, that's the one I want. I need to decide where I want to stop from take seven, so. I just want this bent out of shape word. Bent out of shape. I want it to stop right here and then I want it to move crossfade right into take 11. And so if I click take nine, it's going to highlight all of take nine. I don't want that. I only want this part starting here. So I'm going to go back and click take seven again. So watch when I scroll back up to nine, you'll see my cursor is now a vertical line. I can click and drag on take nine and you'll see what happens. So if I go over here, click and drag. Now you can see I can drag any part of take nine I want and it takes it away from take seven. So I'm gonna drag it all the way up to where that bent out of shape stops. So it's bent out of shape and it stops here. And I want the crossfade to happen right in between here because I want the breath to happen here. So I want the crossfade to happen here. We go up and click on the um, up arrow here. What we did here is we actually did a crossfade. So that's crossfading the tracks for us automatically so we don't have to go in and chop and do two crossfades together. And so we will continue going through each of these tracks and seeing what we like. Okay, we're going to click and drag the loop at the top and I haven't listened to each one of these at the whole takes yet. So now I have to go through and listen to the 11 takes of these tracks to see which one I like best. You just start at the bottom or the top Make sure you listen to the whole track. You can loop specifically that. So whenever you press space bar, it will start. You can quickly go down and see which one makes an impression on you. Obviously there's subjective opinions that need to come from this. So for me, I like take nine the most, but you can get very specific on how deep you wanna go in your comp. If you only like this part in take nine and you actually want this part in take 11, you only want this part and take, uh, sorry, you want this part and take 10 and this part and take 11, you can do that. Um, the more comping you do, the less likely it will sound better just because you're adding so many pieces from different takes, but that's up to you. Sometimes you can make it work if the takes aren't that different. A couple things you wanna do at the beginning and end are making sure you're doing those fades at the beginning and end. So we can see here on take five, we wanna make sure we fade that right kind of to the end of the vocal. You can see it's already taken take seven, so we'll just fade that into take seven. There's a little bit there, and then we don't want that to pop, so just click back on take five here, drag to the right to lose that, and then drag it back to the left. And we're gonna wanna fade in as well. So you can see there's take here, we wanna get rid of this take, and it's going right in at take seven. Sorry, zoom in here. Having right at take seven, we wanna do the same thing. Pull it back in, pull this in, out, take seven, and right at the beginning. You wanna leave a little room, obviously, so you can hear the breath come in. Snap up the vocal at the top here by pressing this, and you have your main take. And what I like to do to make sure I have everything, the fades are working, I like to solo the track and listen to it without any music, without any effects. So I can specifically hear the vocal and I can also hear the fades and if there's any breaths not happening at the right place. Quickly listen. I had my fade, but. So right here you can see there's a pop here. I had my fade. And there's a pop there because something's happening with the fades and obviously as I was showing you in the example before, this could get too tricky, right? If we're going to do, I have my fade. There's a pop here. We're trying to crossfade two tracks that are just so close together. I have my fade. And that will be quite hard to do. I have my fade. So sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and go to a new track. It's better to have a slightly less better take than a pop in the song. 
So sometimes you can't do those crossfades if they're just so close together, unless you get really deep and start moving things around in the vocal signal. But as we are just doing simple vocal comps for beginners, uh, you don't have to necessarily do that. You would snap it back up, see, continue to listen to make sure all the fades are correctly in, and then we can go over to the right here and put our EQ back on, put a compression on, put a pitch if you want, bust out any reverbs. So that's our vocal comp of our verse, and we would do the exact same thing to verse two. When we have our finished comps, we will have an option to get, completely get rid of all the takes if we like, save up some space, and we want to know we really like this comp, we can flatten everything and merge all the tracks together so it's in one vocal track. And so how we do that is we can click this A, flatten and, and merge, and then it's gonna give me a clean vocal take where I can do my fade in, fade outs, or extend it if I'd like. And so that will save up space and keep things clean, but only do that if you wanna get rid of all those takes because now they're gone and you can't get them back. I don't do that till the very end until I'm convinced because I like to have the takes in place all the time so you know you have the option to change it if you want to change it. For simplicity's sake of this video, let's say we actually love all these comps, so we're gonna flatten and merge all these comps that we've done and we're going to uh, fade them here and we're gonna line them up in one vocal track just so we have one vocal chain where we can put all the effects on. We can do automatic fades here. Now we have one vocal one with our comp vocal nice and clean on one vocal chain and that's how to do vocal comping for beginners. Let me know if you have any questions, please put them in the comments, I will reply to them. I'm a singer-songwriter myself and I do all my demos as you can see inside Logic Pro X. So if you're curious to what I sound like, I'll leave a couple links to my music in the description. And stick around, feel free to subscribe too, I post a lot of videos. So I hope to see you in the next one.